Good evening, everyone. My name is Heath Haskins, Code Primate, and this is Learn Roblox. It's all the tutorials that you can find on the Wikia page right here, wiki.roblox.com. We are currently in the Roblox Basics, and we are going to be doing the terrain tonight. Intro to terrain. Um, I know, everybody's like, oh my gosh, teach me scripting! We're getting there, okay? I want to do every single tutorial because eventually I want my kids to be able to watch it as well. And I hope I'm not that boring. And what am I doing sitting here talking to you guys? Let's do this! Intro to terrain. So if you want to follow along, the link's going to be in the description down below. Create environments with the terrain tool. Now, I'm not going to let you see the entire page because we're going to switch it over. And if you want to follow along, you can absolutely do so from the link in the description down below. So, here we go. Um, absolutely. Okay, creating environments with the terrain tool. Terrain tools allow you to create realistic landscapes like mountains, rivers, and can uh, canyons. This overview will explain the tool used to create the terrain and how to create specific features like mountains or waterfalls. Uh, and then there's a time lapse that it shows. Opening the terrain tool from the home tab, right here, boop. Um, click on the editor, boop, that one right there. <coughs> Um, you will see all the available tools available to you right over here. Nice. Okay. I thought you had to go to model and then terrain for that. Oh, well. Different tool, I guess? Maybe? Maybe. Anyhow. Whenever you click on any terrain tool, such as generate, add, subtract, it will open a terrain widget. Each widget has a slightly different feature, like these below. Uh, attribute and description, size, the size of the brush, strength, the speed at which the tool, like, the speed of the tool, higher speeds m modify terrain quicker, shape, the shape of the brush can either be a cube or a sphere, material, uh, the appearance of the terrain. Below are different, okay, so let's do add, there's the widget stuff down below. This actually looks different, this looks like a different version, because it used to be this little window that would pop up over here, so, very cool. Then this looks like an old tutorial. Oh, no, it's not. It's, this is the new tutorial. Generating terrain. Um, we could generate, but I really don't want to. Because if I do, it's going to like cover all this stuff up. And I, I don't want to do... Oh, what's that? Oh, that's something I was producing a long time ago. Anyhow. Um, generate tool is used to create random landscapes. You can use this tool to quickly start a new landscape. And then change it based on your individual vision. Um, and then the next part says attribute descriptions, um, map size, seed, canvas. That's under the generate, by the way. Map size, seed, canvas, biome size, and biomes. So you can choose what it's going to generate, how big it's going to generate. And if you have a particular seed that you want, then you could throw that in there. Like if you wanted to share the terrain that was created, give it to somebody else, they could put that seed in there and it would create the exact same kind of... Um, terrain that you're making yourself so all right uh, terrain generation tips terrain generation can take time make a small map so that you can build quicker if you generate a cool terrain you can give that seed number to your friend so they can plug it in and generate it. that's exactly what I just said oh my goodness using the terrain grid um, you if you select any of the terrain tools like add subtract or road you'll see a grid appear at your mouse so let's do that now Add. Oh my goodness, there's a grid there. It's amazing. I love it. Okay. Um, da -da -da, got lost. All the terrain is created on that grid. As you move your mouse, uh, the cursor and the grid move along with it. Changing the angle of your camera will also change the angle of the grid. So for example, we're at like 45 degrees, 90 degrees, 45, 0, 45, 90. See how there's, a, there's like angles on it? All right, we'll get to get to that in just a second. Uh, changes the angle of the grid. Um, with the add tool turned on, you can click and drag the mouse to create terrain. Terrain. Notice that the terrain is affected by the angle of your grid. Tilting and rotating the camera will change the angle of the grid. That's uh, the second time that I've said that. Uh, using the terrain tool for rough sculpting. Okay, so. Um, here, let's go up to the top of this little mountain, because I've already generated terrain here. Uh, it's just going to be grass. There we go. We can generate some terrain. And then we can use the erode tool. We can just erode away some terrain. Uh, if we change our, let's see, material. If I'm doing add, and I do sand, and then I do erode, it should 
No, it's subtract. It doesn't. Why, why does it not do? Okay, blocking out. Add and subtract are the most common tools. These tools are useful for blocking out or building the majority of your environment. Before starting, uh, start, before you start getting into add details like a canvas or waterfall. Okay. So let's undo that because I want it to, let's see, that's regions, erode, grow. Okay, grow actually just takes the, whoa, what happened there? Oh, I selected the different. There we go. So grow takes the current terrain. Let's do erode. Can we erode to sand? Is that possible? There's supposed to be a way that I can erode. Subtract maybe? Plane lock, snap to grid, ignore water. Hmm. Oh, maybe they've got terrain under it. I never thought about that. All right, control Z, 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 Z. There we go. Okay, we're back to normal. Good. Okay, um, add and subtract are the most common tools. These tools are useful for blocking out or building the majority of your environment before you start getting into adding details like canvas and waterfall or building that majority of your environment before you start getting into the building canvas, uh, oh, sorry, caves and waterfalls. All right, terrain scale. You can do the following to make sure that your terrain looks great for the players. No, wait, can you guys actually see what I'm seeing? Okay. About to say, like, I don't want you guys. Oh, did it push it over? Oh my gosh, it did. So because the, okay, just so you know, my graphics card is picking up the actual 3D area and my uh, Intel card, my onboard chip card, is picking up all the rest. So the window and the 3D environment are two separate windows. So the tool that I've been selecting over here on the left-hand side, you can't even see that. That's because, hold on. That's because, come here. Um, fade. Oh gosh, it's over here. And you can't even see that either. Oh my gosh, what is wrong with my graphics card? Seriously. <sighs> oh well, oh well. Okay, so just know that there's a generate and add, subtract, paint, grow, and erode over there on the left-hand side, and you can select from them. Each one that I've been saying and talking about. Oh gosh, why is this so messed up? Doesn't matter, let's move on. Uh, your terrain might look different from different angles, so be sure to move the cam camera around, uh, camera view frequently as you can create terrain to uh, to make sure that you're building what you want. So, for example, say I'm building at an angle like this, right? Oh, hold on. Got to select the add tool. Say I'm building at an angle like this. I'm like, wait a second, why is it? It, it doesn't look like it's going straight up and down. Well, that's because I'm building at an angle, right? Versus. Like, let's say I wanted to build straight up like this and say code, code. Oh gosh, there's nothing for me to start off of. Oh, I guess, I guess there we go. Code. Come on, dude. There we go, code, yay. I'm not gonna leave that there. Control Z Z Z Z Z Z Z Z. Done. Anyhow, some really cool stuff that you can do with the terrain. Uh, using the terrain tool for detailed sculpting. While uh, you may spend most of your time sculpting terrain using the add and subtract tool, it is important uh, to add details to better fine tune your terrain and make it look interesting. Paint, grow, erode, and smooth tools are generally used for adding those finer details after you've sculpted a rough environment. Paint tool. The paint tool changes the terrain's current material, for example, grass, rock, water. Uh, this tool is useful for adding vari variations to make a for a higher quality environment, such as dirt, rock, patches in the grass, or rock patches in the, gra in the grass. Okay, so. What they're talking about and this isn't this isn't gonna look right because I'm I don't have terrain down here but if I 
did, it would probably look something like this. Come here. Let's add. Gotta make it a little bit bigger. Come on. Something like this. All right, and say this is the, the walkway out in front of uh, one of my buildings, All right? And we select the paint tool, and I'm gonna select dirt. Dirt, where's dirt? Just dirt, I just want dirt. No dirt, hmm. Okay, cobblestone, cobblestone would be fine. Just fine. And I'm gonna switch back over to round one. That way, like I would have a cobblestone walkway coming out in different directions just like that and that's the that's using the paint tool or say I didn't like this and I wanted it to look more concrete now we can paint and make it look like concrete Ooh, nice for example, if you're building terrain and you wanted to build a terrain castle, you could absolutely make it look like a castle. Now, I would also suggest that you like smooth this out a little bit. So we're just gonna select the smooth tool. We should smooth it all to one region. Actually, I'm gonna select the region tool. The region tool. Delete, delete. Oh, wait, why did that not try again? And delete, perfect. And now I can paint. And we're gonna make this look like bricks. And I'm gonna change the size so I can do it quickly. So it's still terrain, but now it looks like a brick building. Change this. All right, where's the uh, erase tool or the subtract tool? Turn our size back down. And good. Gone. Just like that. If I wanted to, I could also just change back over the paint. There we go. There we go. I also have snap to grid turned on. So everything snaps to grid. There we go. Very nice. I'd also want to go come back in and even these out. But I'm not going to do that right now. I'm not going to bore you, bore you with the, the little details. Grow tool. Uh, the grow tool slowly fills the selected area with terrain. This tool is useful for adding details like hills or smoothing out between two different terrains. Um, so, okay, I guess we will use it. I'm gonna click the smooth tool. I'm just gonna smooth this out a little bit, maybe. Okay, that that is messing up left and right. We are on the smooth tool, right? Looks like it's eroding instead of smoothing. Yeah, it's gonna take some practice. Control Z, undo. <laughs> the erode tool slowly removes the terrain. Uh, this tool is useful for creating caves, canyons, rivers, and lakes. So, I'm going to do the erode tool. We're gonna switch back over to the sphere shape. I'm gonna make a cave right here. Just erode straight through. Like that. Now we're not gonna be able to see down in here, but if we wanted to, we could probably turn on a light of some kind. You can see that the cave comes through right there. And I'm just gonna go that direction. And then I'm gonna go up. So I'm gonna angle it upwards. Good, we're almost to the top. Go off at this angle right over here. 
And we're out. So now there's a cave. Yay! And that cave tunnel, uh, let's see, actually leads up to the top of the mountain. There we go. Now you also might want to like play the game through and check to make sure that it's big enough. If it's not, you can always use that erode tool to push out a little bit more terrain. <clears throat> smooth tool. The smooth tool will smooth terrain in the selected area. This tool is useful for making jagged terrain more smooth and natural, getting rid of sharp corners and making the terrain look less square. Uh, I'm not going to demonstrate that one because you can see it. Uh, sculpting with regions. Oh, we're, we're like at the last part. Yay. Okay. Sculpting with regions. Regions can speed up the process of creating terrain by giving you the ability to duplicate large pieces of terrain. These are especially useful for the following. Build one waterfall and then replicate it to place it in another area. Create a set of rock formations and then duplicate it to... Wait. Duplicate it to quickly make a mountain range. Uh, fill gaps in terrain. All right, selecting and manipulating the region. So you can't see it, but you select the region tool. Uh, click on select in regions and make sure that it's active. Done. Oh, there's a second set of tools. The merge, empties, select, move, resize, rotate. And then it says to click and drag the region box. So let's copy out my... Um, cave that we just did. Just like this. Oh, uh, that one there. There we go. Once you have a region selected, you can select between move, resize, rotate uh, in the terrain widget menu. These tools are very similar to how they work with parts. Using copy, paste, delete, and fill, you can also copy, paste, uh, copy and paste entire regions. So um, let's switch to the move. All right, and we should be able to just cut that out and move it all along. Nice. Or we can move it this way, that way. Cuts out the whole region. Or I can put it right back where it was. Uh, let's change to the resize tool. Now that is kind of weird. Kind of cool. Okay, very cool. Control Z. Oh, control Z. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and then uh, there is the copy. So let's do this. Move this over here. I'm going to select copy. And now we can come over here and select paste. And that pasted region is an exact copy. I think. Maybe. Control Z, control Z. Uh, once you've pasted the region, the studio will automatically switches. Uh, studio will automatically switch to the move tool, like you saw, and uh, so you can move the copied region. You can even delete or fill an entire region with material. Oh, so forgot about that. Let's just select this region right here, make it that tall, and select region done. And we're going to use fill, and I'm going to choose brick, and OK. There we go. Now we filled an entire region with bricks. Yay! And that's all terrain. So you could essentially build completely in terrain mode. And do fill. Okay. If you really wanted to. If you had the time. Fill. And okay. Done. So look at that. And this is actual terrain, it's not bricks or parts, stuff like that. Which by the way, over here on the left hand side, or sorry, the right hand side, up in terrain, this is what's actually generating this stuff for you. Um, it keeps track of all this, all the vectors and all the different things. That's more complicated and I'll get into that later. Uh, I do have a game where you get a pickaxe and you can chop into terrain and it will cut away and erode parts of the terrain. I made that pickaxe myself, made the scripts myself, Basically, it's the same thing. It's it's a script that says the area that's right in front of the avatar, it creates a, a ball that you can't see, you can't collide with, it's just invisible. And anywhere within that ball, it takes away that piece of terrain. 
that's how I produced the, the mining game that you guys have seen before. And you get to wear the Dominus if you go in there. Just saying. All right, merging, uh, merging empty regions. <coughs> when you select a region, you can select the air inside that region. And when, when editing regions move, moving, resizing, etc., the merge empty option affects the outcome. Oh, that's actually something I didn't know. Okay, so merge empty. There's a little checkbox at the very top that says merge empty. And if you move two regions closer together, it still keeps them separated. Like the two different regions, they won't mix. But if you have merge regions on, it will put them together and then paint where it specifically like changes. Um, there's a picture of it inside the uh, actual page itself, and that's it, it! That's the end of it. If Merge Empty is on, Studio will combine the selected region with, the, with its surroundings. This is useful if you want to make sure that a region naturally merges with, the one, with what's around it, <clears throat> as shown here in between ice and stone. If Merge is off, Studio doesn't merge the region with what's currently there. This is useful if you want to keep the regions exactly like it was built, as seen, as seen here by the air region remaining when the ice block is moved. Hmm. Very cool. Thank you everyone for watching this Learn Roblox episode with me, Heath Haskins, Code Primate. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, do all those cool things that I'm supposed to call out at the end of the video. And yeah, I hope you keep building, keep, keep scripting, and keep watching. Love you guys very much. Have a great night, and we will talk to you very soon. Outro. Thank you.